eso. <coughs> okay, so yesterday what we have covered, okay, starting with the big data fundamentals, right? So basic concepts of the big data concepts, right? So it's more about uh, what is a big data, what are the types of big data, and uh, what are the use cases of big data, right? And uh, some other concepts of uh, big data where we can use Hadoop, right? So Hadoop architecture. So we started with the Hadoop architecture. So Hadoop architecture, we've seen that uh, there are the two core component of Hadoop, SDFS and uh, SDFS and the MapReduce. Okay, so SDFS has two core component for the like, name node and uh, data node. Name node is maintaining the metadata, which is uh, uh, the data about the actual data. And uh, data node is containing the actual data. Okay, so we have uh, name node and data node. Okay, and uh, we've seen that uh, how to install Hadoop, and uh, those are the five services name node, data node, and the uh, second thing name node. Okay, the three services are the SDFS and the MapReduce, the two services like resource manager and node manager. Okay, the so resource manager is the master of node manager, <clears throat> and resource manager is allocating tasks to the node manager, and node manager is doing actual tasks on the data node on the particular data. So next thing is, and we've seen the Hadoop command, right? SDFS command. So those are the useful command to copy the data on the Hadoop file system, or we can do some other file manipulation in the Hadoop file system. Hadoop file system is a virtual file system. So we have to, uh, we can access SDFS file system. There are the three different ways. One is the command line way. So command line way is uh, the terminal we can access the Hadoop file system. So that is the command line way. We can access the Hadoop file system. And uh, second way of accessing the Hadoop file system is the remote Hadoop file system. If the Hadoop file system is the, in the remote machine, so we can access using the curl API, REST curl API. So REST curl API, when I talk about the Hadoop file system is in remote machine, so I will be using REST curl API. REST curl API command. So curl is a Unix feature, right? That is providing to access any system remotely, right? With the IP and port, okay? So we should know about the some REST service which is exposed by the our Hadoop file system, okay? So that is the Wave SDFS API, okay? Yesterday I showed some Wave SDFS API. This is the REST service expose, okay? So after that slash, and then you can use different operation. So one operation like MKDIR, on another operation can be there like open, open the file, right? So these kind of uh, operation we can do remotely, okay? And uh, I will give the all command of uh, separately so you can practice, okay? And the third way, which I didn't show, that is a Java project, okay? So SDFS, SDFS Java project. SDFS Java project is a way, programmatic way. It's a programmatic way. You know, right in the AWS, uh, we can access different, different way. Like console is a one way. Command line is a one way. Third way is a programmatic approach in any programming language, Python, Java, Perl, Ruby, right? The so similar way Hadoop is giving a different, different APIs access, right? Java API or like any program we can access. So in this way, we can do automation kind of thing. We can do automation, okay? We can do automation, right? Suppose I say, I want to create 100 folders in the Hadoop file system. And the folder name should be folder one, folder two, folder three, folder four. So I will be writing a Java code or Python, even Python code we can write, and then we can do automation, right? I want to create 100 folder in Hadoop file system by using the suffix, right? So one, two, three, four, five will be the suffix. So that will be, somebody is asking question. Yeah. Is there sound? Oh, you guys are not getting my sound? Can can you confirm? You are audible. Yeah, so anyone who is not able to listen, so they have to join again, because if other people are able to hear, so it means problem with the that particular person. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
so please confirm me anytime like if you are not able to get my voice okay so sdfs java project so this part also i will show okay in the weekday session i will show this whatever the remaining things we have not covered i will show those things okay so this will be a java project this is the java project okay or even python code also i will show python code to connect sdfs using programmatic way okay so this is very important sometimes i don't have the access of terminal i don't have access of the rest api so this is the final or last way that we can create a one java project in my machine and i can access remotely okay like i have a that remote uh, SDFS location I have and I can access, okay? So I can do operation, right? And now the next thing is a MapReduce. When we come to the MapReduce, we started with the MapReduce fundamental, right? So MapReduce is a computing part of the Hadoop, right? It's a processing part, right? So when I talk about MapReduce, generally we do some computation, right? So so MapReduce architecture, when we come to the MapReduce architecture or MapReduce framework, so it, it is based on the map and reduce two functions. So there are the two functions. There are the two functions. One is map function and reduce function. Okay. So map function is splitting the data into multiple machine and reduce is combining the data from multiple machine to one machine. So this is kind of parallelization. Map, map is a parallelization. So when I get some input file, I get some input file. Okay, so generally I will be processing the data like a file data. Any other type of data I can process with the map reduce, but mostly the map reduce is used for the text file data or CSV, JSON, any kind of file system data I can do because I'm writing a code in Java and Java can easily process the any kind of file system data. Even MapReduce is a very good uh, example. Like we can say, um, like I can use the image and audio video processing also. So we know, right, uh, for unstructured data, okay, for unstructured data, there are the Java APIs are there. There are the Java APIs are there. And these Java APIs are written in Java. These APIs are written in Java for image processing, for image or audio or video, right? So these Java APIs we can use in our MapReduce program and we can process the even unstructured data, okay? Or semi-structured data, structured data, every type of data we can handle in MapReduce efficiently, okay? Because we are using Java in MapReduce, okay? So input file, we are getting some text file data we are getting. We are assuming it like we have our text file, which has a lot of words out there, okay? And I want to do the word count for this file. So when I say I want to do word count for this file, so first of all, I have to apply my map task, I have to apply map task, which will split these line of text into multiple path machines. So those I'm calling is mapper machines. Okay, mapper machines, right? So different, different machines, my data will be distributed. So who will be deciding this? Name node will decide how many nodes this data will be distributed across in the cluster. Okay, so once this data is distributed by mapper and the mapper task is to give each word one count. Each word, it will split it line into that word. Split, split lines into number of word, number of word as an array, as array. Okay, and then take each word. This is a logic. Okay, this is a logic of map. Take each word and give each word one count. Okay. So we are assuming it every word has one count, right? I'm just assuming, say, I'm saying like hello is there, hello is comma one. Hi is there, hi comma one. So every word is a one count. Okay. So I'm what I'm doing with the map function is splitting the line into the number of words as an array and take each word, like I'm treating the each word by word and give each word is a one count. And I'm just giving this output to the shuffle and sort. So shuffle and sort is the another phase of the word count program, uh, another phase of the map reduce architecture, shuffle and sort, shuffle, shuffle and sort. So shuffle and sort, what it does, it will, it will, it will aggregate, 
same keyword together and do sorting. So what will happen? Same key because everything is going key value pair. Map is also taking key value pair. Shuffle and sort is taking key value pair and reduce will be taking also key value pair. But here when the shuffle and sort is uh, basically what is forming key comma count of word count of uh, same key count of same key. Okay, so how how it will come? It will come hello if three time is there one comma one comma one. So it's a list of value. It's a one is a list of values, but it is again key value pair. So hello is a key. Here is hello is a key. Hello is a key, and this one 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 is a list of value. Again, it is a key value pair. So everything is going in the map reduce key value pair. Even the output is also key value pair. So key value pair means when the when it is starting the program, it is reading the line of text that is also key value pair because every line is having some position. So if I say my input file is this, okay, this is my input file, and this input file is given to the map function. When it is given to the map function, so every line is having some starting position. How can I say this line is different from this line? So the position of the line, if I say this position, I'm assuming it zero position is there. And this line position is like number of character in this line. Suppose this lines, this correct, these characters are 15 characters are there. So I will assume it, this line will be 15, 15 comma, this line of text. So this is called offset. So offset is a position from where something is going to start. Generally the definition of the offset, like I say uh, one set of lines. So what is the offset of this, this line? This line is offset is a whatever the number of character in the previous lines, right? This line. So this is offset. So I can say that this line will come first and this line will come later, right? Because the offset is higher than the previous line, right? So this is also key value pair. When map is taking, map is emitting also key value pair. So what is a key value pair in the map? That is all word is a one, 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 right? All word is one, right? Hello is one, how is one? So this is the map output. And what is a shuffle and sort output? So shuffle and sort is taking this each and every word and just finding which are the same key. And the, for the same key, it is preparing the list of values. So how is two time? So how one comma one will come? Hello is two time. So hello one comma one will come, right? And this output, this output of shuffle and sort will be given to the reduce function. And when it is given to the reduce function, reduce function is simply doing the sum of the values, list of values. So what it will do? Hello comma two and how comma two. Like this it will do. And this will be final output written into my table, written into my file, not table, written into my output file. So whatever output file, the output file name will be reduce um, part R, part hyphen R hyphen 0, 0, 0, 0. If it is a first file, if it is a second file, so part R 0, 0, 0, 1. So one here is only one file, right? So when the output is written in the file, so default name of the file is part R000. So we cannot change this file while the processing. We can rename later, but we cannot change during the program. We cannot change. This is the default name is given by the map reduce. Okay. So this output is generated in a file. This file name will be part R. Okay. I will show this all things. Okay. Is it clear so far? <clears throat> okay, so I'm doing first local setup, okay? So this is my IntelliJ, how to download the IntelliJ. So if you go to the browser, so there is a, you can search IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is a ID for the Java or Scala application, okay? So Java or Scala application, like whether you write, uh, uh, Spark Java or Scala Java, anything you can do in the, how is the position of the word? Example 15, relevant in the shuffle and sort. The so, shuffle, okay, how is the position of the word? So, this is not a position of the word. This is the position of the line. Actually, shuffle and sort is not getting this position. This position is, uh, 
this position is being taken by the map function. I didn't say the shuffle and sort. Shuffle and sort is taking the word only. Shuffle and sort doesn't know this position, right? Okay. We are giving this zero comma. This, we are giving input. We are giving input file. But who is deciding the zero or fifteen? Like map reduce program is giving to the map map function. Okay. So this is we are not giving in our program. We are not giving in our uh, file input file. Input file we are giving only this. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? This line of text we are giving in the input file. But when the map reduce program is reading this file, it is finding the position. This line is in this position and this line is in this position and map is taking input as a key value pair. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So first we need to do the IntelliJ to download. Okay. IntelliJ is uh, ID. Okay. We can use Eclipse or other uh, like uh, ID tool we can use. Eclipse is another one. But here mostly we use uh, in the projects also IntelliJ. So IntelliJ community version we have to download. So IntelliJ we use for the Java and Scala project and PyCharm is used for Python Spark project or Python code. Okay. So this is a difference in IntelliJ and PyCharm, but both are from the same company. Okay. So IntelliJ community addition download. Okay. So you can, you can download for the windows or Linux version. Okay. You can download one, any one of the one. So here you can see the different, uh, uh, like uh, versions are there different for the different operating system. So if I'm using Ubuntu, this is my Ubuntu. So this is a Linux version. So you have to download this star file. If you are going to install in the windows, just simply click on this. It will install it as a wizard. Okay. If you are having a Mac OS, so you will get the DMG file and then you can install it uh, in the Mac OS. So for different and, but make sure like you are using community version because community version is the free. If you are using ultimate version, that will be paid version. Okay. That will be a trial version will be there. Okay, so 2022, this, this, any one of the version, like whichever your operating system allow, so then you can use that. So once you download this, I show you how to open. So, so I have downloaded and extracted here. This is my IntelliJ. If you look at here, this is my idea IntelliJ. Okay, this is my idea, idea IE. This is the editor. Okay. So once you come into the your IntelliJ, once you download it, go to the bin directory. Okay. I already started. I close this. So I will show you how to start. Oh, I close the computer. Okay. I have to start again my Ubuntu. <clears throat> okay. So, so I will I will show the setup of the if you if you are familiar with the IntelliJ, so you will easily write a Java application also, right? In the Scala or any Java application in IntelliJ. So you need to understand the uh, what is a POM, right? Okay, the Maven project. Okay, so how to import the Maven project? Okay, so Maven project has the dependencies of the jar, right? Because whenever we are using any project, right, we have a Java dependency. Okay. Okay, so I go to my, so same thing we can do in the AWS instance also, but IntelliJ we cannot open there, but uh, we can deploy the uh, like MapReduce code. Okay. So that I will show later. First I'm showing about uh, how to use IntelliJ to set up locally in uh, MapReduce program. So in IntelliJ. So here open the terminal and uh, dot slash idea dot sh. Okay. So this will start your IntelliJ and in windows, uh, you can directly in the program menu, you can uh, find the IntelliJ and you can start. Okay. You can start. Okay, so this is a one of the support project one. So I will show you a uh, new project, right? Okay, so I have already downloaded, so I have to import the project, okay? So I will go to open project, open. So, uh, 
Okay, this is a map reduce program code downloaded. First time extracted. Okay, this is the map reduce WC. Okay, this code I will keep it in the directory somewhere in the my idea projects. Okay, I paste it here. So this is the workspace is created when you open the IntelliJ first time in the home folder. Home folder is your user folder. If you see this location is this is your user, right? This is my user. Okay. Slash home slash my username and idea project. So this idea project is having the, this is a workspace and this workspace, you have all the projects. Okay. So last project, which I working on this project is was there. Okay. So now I'm opening this project map reduce word count project. So how to open the project, go to the idea project and here find the location of the project. It is showing here and you can see this symbol, some black symbol you are able to see this means it is a project it is not ordinary folder it is not an ordinary folder if you see any other folder this symbol is there no right so whenever any any project java project or any project is there so it has the symbol okay so when you open this project it will ask you trust project so you have to do trust project and there are the two options either this window or new window if you do this window so you will not open another IntelliJ. It will, it will open itself in this window. Okay. So if I'm not using my previous project, so you can do this window. If you are using the previous project, so you can do new window. So you will have two IntelliJ, but right now is only one IntelliJ because it has opened in the same window. Okay. So now your code has come in the editor. So yesterday I was showing you the code. These are the classes were there, right? These are the Java classes. Okay. So yesterday I was showing you the this code, right? You guys are able to see the clear the scheme. Okay. You can change the font here. Uh, here we have to go to setting. So or uh, we can do the appearance thing is there. This is a Dracula. We can change IntelliJ light and high contrast. Okay, high contrast, you can see that it's a different color. So this one is good or this one is good. IntelliJ light, okay. So we can use IntelliJ light, okay. So IntelliJ light is showing this, okay. <clears throat> okay, so this one is uh, uh, like I have opened the my, my MapReduce program. So this same code, we can write it. Okay, suppose if I want to create my own new project, so I go to the project. I am creating a new project. I say my project name is map reduce map reduce word count. Okay. And I want to create this project is the Maven type project. And I will select the Maven is giving the which arc type you are using, which type of project of Maven you are going to create. So this is a quick start type. So quick start type is a basic core Java project. It's a, it's nothing using the Spring Boot or REST API, nothing. It's just simple core Java project. So you have to choose this quick start type because your, your Maven dot uh, Maven project will be created and it will be of having form dot XML. Okay. And Java, you are using JDK eight, which is already configured in your uh, like uh, in the Ubuntu. Okay. And this is a project name. And when I do this create again, it will ask if you want this window or new window. I do in the new window because I want to keep it open this project also do this new window. So now you will see there are the two IntelliJ are there. Okay. This is a one IntelliJ and this is second IntelliJ. So this is just created a new project. It's creating a new project. It is uh, downloading the centralized repository jar, right? Maven repo. So this Maven repo is the centralized repository from there it is downloading the jar. So this is a basic project is created like just form.xml they have given basic form, right? The one dependency. I mean, right now we have to add the dependency for the Hadoop. Okay. And this is a source class folder, source folder they created, but there is one sample class is given public static void main, hello world Java. So if I run this class, I say run app. So this will print hello, hello world. Because it is 
it is written over there. So this is just sample class. This sample class is given by the sample class is given by the 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 when when we created a new project. So this Maven project, this sample class is given. Okay. So how to move the classes? Okay. Suppose I have this is my word count program one. Okay. So first I run it here, then I will show how to add the classes in the new project. Okay. So this is my word count job. So I told you that yesterday, right? Word count job is a driver class, which is having the main function, which is having the main function. Okay. So here I'm creating is a Java job. I'm creating a job, right? Because MapReduce program is a job, right? I'm creating a one job and I'm setting my mapper class and reducer class. So combiner class we don't use now. I'm commenting it. I will show you what is a reducer combiner class. Okay, so mapper class I'm setting. What is my mapper class? So mapper class is my word count mapper. This is my mapper class logic. So this mapper class logic is a map function and map function I'm giving each word is a one count. Each word is a one count. So this is the main logic of the mapper class function. So mapper class function, what is doing? It is iterating each word and giving it the one, one count and writing into the context. And context is the object which is used to share the data between the mapper and reducer, right? So when mapper is emitting data, it is going to the context. And when reducer or shuffle and sort is reading data, they are reading data from the context. So context is a common shareable object where either you write object and whenever we are getting in the as a parameter. So we will be reading from the context right? this off. So when I go to the reducer, the so reducer is reading the data from the context. This is coming from the context, this one key and values. This is coming from the context. And again, it is writing to the context. So the thing is, if whenever your data is traveling over the network, it should be a writable type. So when you have a data is in int writable, so when you want to do some manipulation on the data, so you have to get the data as a preemptive data. So this, this, this is a preemptive number, right? So when you are doing the calculation, you can't do on the int writable type. So what you are doing value dot get you are calling. So suppose this is an int writable type. This is a list of values of int writable type. So I'm iterating the each value of the int writable type and getting the preemptive value from value dot get. When I do value dot get, it will give the preemptive type. Okay. And, and whatever my preemptive value is there, I'm doing the sum because I can do the sum with the one primitive number to another primitive number. We cannot do primitive number sum to the, it, uh, the, the serializable one. We can't do because serializable is only for transfer the data, but primitive is for doing the sum locally like calculation locally and then again you make it serializable type of uh, this number this number is not a, is, is this number final number right once you done all the sum of the values so initially suppose you got key suppose you get the key comma value list of values list of values suppose one comma one one three three one you got it and your key is hello. Suppose your key is a hello and you got one comma one. So when, when this, when this one, 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 you add in the zero, so what will become hello comma three, it will become hello comma three. And this three is a primitive number. Again, we have to make it a, again, I have to make it a, in writable type because I can't uh, send to the over the network without making it uh, writable type. So again, what I'm doing here in writable result result in writable and I'm setting it. Okay. Or directly I can do if I don't want to write these two lines, actually it is a very lengthy one they written. So I can directly write new in writable and I even can part pass this result number like, like this. This is also correct. So I don't need to do the entire two lines of code. I can write in a single line, new int writable, and then pass the my sum, sum value. That is a primitive type, okay? And and text is already the serializable type. So here is no change in this, right? Text is a key and key is passing, right? So as it is, I'm passing as a serializable. So both are serializable, okay? 
So in the map, if you see the map, map is I'm taking a text as a key, right? I'm taking a key, uh, text is an input. Line of text is coming as an input. And this is the offset. This is the offset, okay? So this offset I'm not using, I'm using only this. If you see, this key is nowhere used here, right? This key is not used because this is an offset number. This is not for our use. I'm using this input and I'm 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 breaking this input line into the in the words and each word I'm giving one one count. If you see word and I'm giving int writable again one serializable type. Okay, and this word is again text type. Okay, so initially this this word I'm again same thing I'm doing here for the word also right word dot set right. So even I can write it directly new text and I can write the word. Okay, I don't need to do this two lines. So I can make it code short. Okay, and this word will be, okay, this word will be coming from here. Actually, this is coming from here. This one, okay. Okay, so this is coming from here. Oh, this is T small. Okay, so this one we can write as a word and then value count one. Okay, so this way we can write in the context. Actually, this part is a separate other part, but this is the main line. This is the one main line which is writing the data in the. So here we are writing one one word in the context and reducer is taking each word list of values of same key and doing the sum and returning the returning to the count uh, context okay okay now if i want to this is my three classes other classes are there but these classes are for other concept right partitioner concept is there so this is a partitioner program and there is the map side join reduce side join is there so there are multiple uh, things are there in the map reduce not only simple word count I can do the partitioner implementation, reduce side join. So joining of the two data set also I can do. Okay. So this is a single data set, right? Suppose I have a data set of two files and then I want to merge two data set, right? So I can do the join. Same like uh, you do the join in the SQL queries, right? You do the inner join, outer join. Similar way join we can do in the two file also. Okay. It is possible. In the map reduce, it is possible. Okay, and this join is not through query. This join is through the your MapReduce MapReduce program is doing the join. Okay, that is the reason it is called map side join and reduce side join. Okay, I, I will tell about this one. Okay. Okay, so, so first of all, I'm just uh, creating these three classes. Okay, I'm copying these classes in my my project. Okay, so this class is not used. I will delete it. I will delete it, this class. Okay. Okay. Now, package, I keep it same. Package, you know, right? Uh, we create a package for uh, to identify which folder my classes are there, right? So, from one same class in uh, two different folder means like it's a package. Okay. So, I'm creating a, I'm pasting out here these two classes. These classes I pasted here. So word count driver class, mapper class, and reducer class. So all three classes I copy pasted. Up now you will see here the errors are coming because I just put the source class here and I'm getting starting the errors. Why? Because I don't have any dependency jar here. If you see in my other project form, if I show you this form, let's see this form. So here is this dependency jar is there, right? So this dependency jar, so dependencies have the dependency and dependency has the three properties. One is a group ID, artifact ID and version. Group ID is your package, artifact ID is a project and version is a that particular version of the project, okay? But this is my own project. So here is a group ID. Okay, this is, this is the API one, this is not mine. Okay, my, if you see mine one, mine one is here. So here is a group ID of my project is org example. Can you see org dot example? And what is my project name? Map reduce word count. So this is automatically created because this is my own word count program. So when I'm creating a new Maven project, so this group ID artifact ID will be given based on your 
naming convention which you use in your project. So I'm using my artifact ID MapReduce WC. I'm using my project ID, project uh, group ID, like my package, ORG example. And version is given default is 1.0 snapshot. That is given as a default uh, version, first version, okay? So this dependency is a API dependency. This is not mine. This is the Hadoop dependency API. So this is, I can check it. I can check it, this version I want to, suppose I want to take it higher version of this. So I have to go to the Maven repo. I can go to the Maven repo. So I can search Maven repo. Maven repo, Maven repository. And suppose I want to check. So this is the 3.3 latest one. Okay, so suppose I, I want to use the latest version jar. So I will copy this, okay. And I can use it. This is the 2.7.3. So I want to compile my classes which this version or new version. So I want to do with the new version. I will add in my Maven dependency with the, this new version. Up now I want to, uh, it is not able to find the repository. So I have to do right click Maven and Maven load. So now it will be downloading from the Google to my local machine. Okay. And once it becomes uh, black, right, like this. So it is. So this is not only one single jar. It has a lot of other dependency jars that will be automatically downloaded. So I need to provide the main jar, main dependency, which is required. And that dependency will automatically download. There are a lot of jars, okay? So now you see, now it's it's fixed, right? This, and now we check the error side. Right? Now we go, this all fixed. If we go here, if we go here, okay? So it's still one is showing, that is showing customer. Okay, so this class, I have, I'm not using now, so I will just make it comment. I'll be right now, I'm not showing partitioner. I'm not using the partitioner. So these two, I will not use. So I'm simple map reduce word count program. Okay, I'm doing. So here I'm telling about my job. This is my main class, driver class, word count job. And what is my mapper class? This is my mapper class. This is my reducer class. And this is my output key class. My final output will be the type of text. And int writable is a type of value type, okay? And after that, I'm setting it. This is just only, okay. So file input format, I'm setting my input format type is a file, like path, location. I will provide this one as if where is my file located. And this is output path means where my file will be generated, in which directory it will generate. And this is the thing is, so you know one thing is in the Hadoop, um, whenever you are generating the output, it should be a new directory always. Okay. So if I'm not, I'm deleting here the existing directory and it will create automatically the new directory. If I don't give this line, so I have to create manually every time the new directory. Okay. I will show that. And this is the final line where my program is coming out. Okay. So first my mapper will start from the driver and then mapper to start reducer and again come back to the driver and then finally my program will exit okay so here is my mapper mapper code i already shown to you right because we are giving each what is a one count here okay and reducer is we are doing the aggregation of the keys okay now we are going to start like how to configure how to run this program in the intellij okay so i will go to here edit configuration and here I have to give first uh, my word count map. Any name you can give my word count. Okay. And here you have to give the main class. Earlier the app was there, but app I deleted, right? So that is the reason it is coming error. So I have to give my driver class. So what is my driver class? The word count job is automatically coming because it has found main function is there in this class. Why the other classes are not coming here? Because they don't have the main function, right? So whichever class will have the main function that will appear here, 
Okay, so it is coming here. Now, next thing comes, I want to pass the parameter. You know, I have given two parameter. One is an input file, one is an output file. So I will decide which will be the my input file where my data is there. Okay, so I find uh, some file. Okay, just, just I take it this example. This file has a lot of words. Okay, so what I do, this file location is this. Okay, this file location is home Arvin and Linux command. Okay, this is the file. And Linux command is a I don't give the space because it will be a problem otherwise. Okay, so my file name is a Linux commands and uh, and uh, my location of the file is on this location. So first I give the path of my file here. Okay, and name of the file. Name of the file is this Linux command. There is no extension, so I don't need to give the extension. Okay, this is my input file and output file path. I have to give a new directory. I told you So home Arvind. I want to create here map output. Okay, just I given a new directory map output and I don't need to give the file name. File name will be created part. R. Okay, last time I told the part R file will be there, right? Part hyphen R hyphen 0000. Now I apply this. Okay. Now I will just run this. Okay. I'm running right now as a Java application. As a Java application, we run main function, but this is not using the cluster. This is not using the cluster. Okay. It is done. When the exit code is zero coming, it means successfully done. If exit code is coming one, it means it is failed. So when I say here in the driver class, I'm saying here zero or one, right? So when exit code zero, it means successfully. Either it will return zero or one, depending on its completion. If this completion is true, you know, right? This is the conditional operator in the Java and Python everywhere. This conditional operator, conditional operator is like when this part is successfully true, right? So this will return the first value. Otherwise it will return the second value. This is like a if else condition, right? So right in the Java or any programming language, you write if else condition. So this is a kind of conditional operator, right? So when this will be true, means zero will return, otherwise one. What is written? Zero. It means it's successfully completed. Suppose it written one, it means it is failed. Somewhere it is failed. And now we go to check our output. So first of all, here some map out folder should be created. It is created, write this map out. And it is created which file? Part R. Can you see this all word? all word count and how much time it, this is very small file but map reduce program is not for the small files right this is very very large large file you can do gvs or tbs file okay um, now this is our all different different word right the files is coming 12 times file system is coming one time grip is coming only one time kill is coming one time right so this is complete word count of all the word hyphen is coming 50 that is also one word count hyphen okay so because hyphen is separated by the space right so hyphen is considered as a word also okay so now this program um, now if i comment this line you will see the error right if i'm not creating a if i'm not deleting my output directory and i want to so either i should change this output directory name i should change this map output one or something new i should give or so that it will create a new one. Otherwise it will, it will give the error. Okay. So now I'm running the program again, same program because I didn't change my output directory name. Okay. So I'm, ge I'm getting the error output directory file already exists. So if any directory is already present and you are trying to run any of the job, right in the Hadoop, not only map reduce, if you are running high with scoop, anything, so it is a naming, it is a convention, right? We should not have existing output directory. We should not have either we should delete it or we should rename existing one so that it will create a existing one. It will create again. Okay. So either I should rename it or I should delete it. If I delete now, my program will run. If I run it now, 
now it will not give the problem because I deleted this map out. So now it will, it is done. So now you see map out again is created, new one. So for this thing, I did this code change. If I keep it, this line, it will do automatically for me. What it will do, whatever your output path is there, it will delete it. It will find out that output path and delete it and it will create a new one by your code. Okay, um, now it will not give the problem because I have already this out directory and now I'm running my word count program. Okay. See, um, now it will not give the problem because I have put this code. If, if this one line of code, if you put it in your code, you don't need to worry about your output directory. It will taking care of that. Okay, so now your output directory is created and your output file is there. And this success file comes by default. It is zero size file. If you see the size of the file is just zero size. It's a zero byte. It, it doesn't have anything. It is just name is success. So whenever the file is created, whenever file is, uh, whenever uh, output file is created, the so one success file will be also copied. Okay, so, so this part are, this part or file is created. This is the map reduce word count output. So this is I shown to you how to create a new project, how to create a class. Uh, these classes you don't need to write, okay? Because these classes are uh, too big, right? Like basically, okay, you have to write. So that is the reason map reduce is uh, not being used because we have to write uh, two to hundred lines of code of all the classes, right? In the Spark, this same thing I can do in the two lines, three lines code. Okay, in the hive, I can do just one line of code, select count star from table. So that is the reason productivity is not there. But why is still the map reduce is that, okay, for unstructured data, for image processing data, audio, video, for that purpose, still we need to use map reduce because map reduce will be using Java API in that particular uh, image processing API, audio processing API. So we need to use, okay, even though it is a, more, more line of code, but but it's not a matter, right? When we are using the image or audio video processing API. But for simple word count program, the same thing I can do with the Hive and I can do with the uh, Spark, just only hard of two, three lines because there are the libraries are there. Okay, so all these are the map and this all functions are already inbuilt functions are there in the Spark. So we don't need to write manual code. I don't need to write this map or and but internally, Spark also using the same approach, but it is internally using. We are not taking care of that. Okay. Is it clear this one? <clears throat> of how to run on the cluster. So see, this is all things I'm showing on the Ubuntu. Either you run on the AWS Ubuntu instance or you run on the, um, in the local machine Ubuntu virtual. Here, this Ubuntu, you have an interface. That is the advantage. So why we are going to set up this Ubuntu setup? Because we have an interface here. We have interface and we can do uh, project setup and these activities we can do. So this Ubuntu setup is uh, like uh, you have in user interface, but in the AWS instance, you won't get the interface, right? You will get only the command line, right? So only command line things you want to do, then AWS instance is good, but you want to do both, right? Uh, the development plus uh, so local setup is good right okay so how to run up uh, now here is my hadoop is there okay so far if i show you my hadoop is running or not running it not a matter okay if i show you the jps command can you see any hadoop services running no right no hadoop is running right i haven't started hadoop but i have run the program here so this program is running through the jar only Okay, so I told you this is just for testing purpose. This is just for testing purpose, how to test your MapReduce code before going to launch on the cluster, you have tested. Because when you are going to launch in the cluster, it is a, it is an activity like you have to, you have to prepare the data on the Hadoop file system, all these things you have to do, okay? So, before that, you want to test your application locally. So just we have tested application in the IntelliJ. Okay. But now if I want to run actual Hadoop cluster, so I need to start the Hadoop first. Okay. Now I need Hadoop. Okay. So far you have just run the program. Same like a Spark program also, we can run two ways. 
first, like I can run in the IntelliJ without having the Spark cluster. Or second one is uh, when I want to test actual application on the Spark, then I have to start the Spark uh, cluster. Okay. So Spark command is different and Hadoop command is different, right? So this is the Hadoop, which is having two components. One is uh, SDFS and another one is the MapReduce. So these are the SDFS services and these two are the MapReduce services, right? If I do JPS command now, now I see my total five services are coming over here, okay? Name node, data node, secondary name node, resource manager, and node manager. And this Hadoop has also user interface. So the port for the this, okay, I find uh, localhost 9870. This is the Hadoop interface. This is the Hadoop interface. Here, if you go to utility and browse file system, so when you go to browse file system, but here you can't uh, upload or delete anything you can't do. So this is the Hadoop file system. This is the Hadoop file system, root file system. So if I create any file here, I say Hadoop FS, okay. Hadoop FS, uh, okay. First I create a directory, Hadoop FS minus MKDIR, test directory I'm creating, okay. So one test directory is created. I copy the file Hadoop FS minus put and suppose any file I take it. See this Linux command I copy. Okay. So, so this file I want to write into the test directory. Okay. And now I refresh here. I will get the test directory. Test directory has this Linux command file. So this file, I can download it from the user interface. So it is downloaded here, Linux command. When I open this Linux command, the same file is coming, okay? So I can see through the user interface also of the Hadoop file system user interface. But this user interface just for the view, it is you can't upload here, only download file you can do, or you cannot do any other manipulation. Okay, you can remove also, you can remove also. Okay, if I want to remove here. So it, it is, okay, permission denied. So user interface, it is not allowing the permission. Okay, so you can mostly the manipulation part you can't do, but you can mostly view part you can do. You can see the directory, you can. So you, you want to see the root directory. So this is a root directory. So this is a default folders are created, okay. So, so this one is uh, now if I want to run on the cluster, suppose in this uh, here, I create a one folder. Here is the option to create folder or upload option is there. Okay. I want to do word count. Okay. I do one thing I in the test directory. Okay. This file is already there. So I want to do this or otherwise I just create another directory Hadoop FS minus mkdir app reduce okay so this directory i created and uh, so this directory map reduce directory i upload the file for the <clears throat> upload the file of the this linux command okay i'm uploading the file Upload file. I think here is a problem to this command file. Okay, we do through the command line. Even I didn't try before this. Okay, so Hadoop FS minus port. My file is a Linux command. And then I want to write it map red. Okay, so my file is copied in the, this is my input file. Okay, this is my, this is my input file. And I want to do the analytics on this file. I want to do the word count on this file. Okay, and I will create another output directory inside this. Okay, so first of all, what I need, I need to create a jar. I need to create a jar of this project. Okay, so I have to create a one setup of the Maven, Maven type of application. So this is the application for running the application in the IntelliJ idea. But now I have to set up the Maven. Then I go to the Maven here. So any project jar you want to create, 
we have to do setup of the maven so maven automatically it has taken the name of the maven as a word count application name same my application name and here i have to give the maven command so first command i have to give clean and install so clean will do the clean build sorry this is clean clean and install install command will create a jar and that jar will have all the classes you know right classes right uh, the byte code right so any java program or any api program is converted into the byte code byte code is the actual classes which is a binary format and that will be executed by the runtime environment okay so java has the two things one is a java compiler and one is a java interpreter if you heard about java compiler interpreter right those are common concept compiler is taking a whole program and convert into the class an interpreter is a line by line it's reading your program and then executing so so here whenever whenever any code you are creating a jar yes sir i mean in the code kaase patla yes sir hello whose voice is coming hello sorry ah uh, okay so when i say like i'm creating a jar of this project and this jar of the project having all the classes so this build is already done right so classes are already so when i'm creating a jar it is doing the build itself first okay so when i'm when i'm giving this command clean install and i'm giving the my directory for which directory i want to create a jar i'm giving a directory here and i apply here okay so i will get here one more map reduce word count my maven task is created maven job is created okay and when i run this it will create a jar in the target folder so this target folder target is the folder where the jar will come here you will see jar will come okay now jar is come so jar has come here in this my target folder and this target folder if i extract this one i will show you i copy this jar i keep it in the some directory here okay i keep it here i create here some local directory map produce word count okay so in this one i keep it my jar okay and this jar i show you extract it and show that what is there if you see here okay so this is the jar with the meta enough one is a org example and these are the classes okay so these are the classes are created but we cannot read this classes because we don't have a decompiler right so decompiler can read the classes only so these are the byte code classes are converted okay so this is done okay this is first we have to create a jar and jar is having jar is having the classes okay now i have to start a terminal i have to start terminal and here i have to use on the running on the cluster so first requirement is my hadoop services are running okay first of all my hadoop services running my all the name node data node all these services and a resource manager node manager okay why all five running because resource manager and node manager it is doing the computation task and the hadoop file system is accessible by this name node data node service right so all five should be running okay and uh, my input folder is on file already created in the hadoop file system so i will give the command hadoop jar then jar name what is my jar name map reduce word count jar okay jar name and then i will give the driver class with fully package name okay so what is my driver class org example and word count job this is my class name my main class name so i have to tell in this in this jar which main class you want to start your execution okay because we you seen that i have already set the jar by class so here i am already telling this thing so when my program will be executing so it will be starting from the word count job but but here on the command line also i have to tell org dot example dot my word count job class okay this one i have to give next parameter i have to give input file and output path input path and output path what is my input path the hadoop path i have to give so jar we don't need to copy on hadoop jar is fine in the locally but your input and output path should be on hadoop only so what was my 
in uh, input path map red slash linux command linux underscore commands okay this file should be there otherwise if this file is not there it will give the error file not found second thing is i have to create a output directory so map red is already present directory that is fine i want to create a new directory here so i am giving a new directory name is out1 it is not there right so the the last directory should be new this directory doesn't matter this directory definitely should be there right because i am creating new the last one is a new okay so out1 is a new directory where my part r file will come same result will come whatever result you seen in your local file system the same result will come the difference is here that this time this code is running on the cluster on the hadoop system it's running okay so now i'm starting my program so here it is utilizing the resources of my hadoop okay so it is starting and this is submitting the job all these parameters things and it is creating a one job id and here it is doing map 0 reduce 0% so can you see here whatever map and reduce we are talking about initially map 0 reduce 0 then map 100 is still reduce 0 because reducer cannot start before completing of the mapper right otherwise it will be conflict suppose if i am not giving each word is a one count and before that i starting reducing is it possible it is it is not possible right because it will be conflict so first i will wait till complete of the 100% map then i will start the reduce right so i will give each word as a one count once after then the shuffle and sort and reduce will start otherwise uh, is no point right so now my program is run it is completed and it is showing here how many record and how many write the record right so input and output record it will be showing so input record it got 51 and output record is a 451 why 451 because each individual word is coming in each line and here is the text of line is there that is the reason 51 lines are there so if you see our this line how many lines are there 51 can you see here 51 lines and when you see the output is that is 451 because these all word are coming in single single line right so that is the reason it is showing 51 is a input record and output record is a 451 now we go and check the output data so how to check with the hadoop command i will check hadoop fs minus cat ls i do first ls map red slash out one is a my folder okay first we see what is coming in the out same result is coming one is a success file and one is a part r 0005 file right and how many bytes are there 1989 bytes are there ab i want to see the result of this file i will i will copy this and hadoop fs cat command so any file output i want to see content i want to see i have to do hadoop fs cat command same result will be there it is same if you want to match here what is part r this is a part r which is generated locally so the first line is the same same everything same right if you match it it is same because processing wise there is no difference only difference is local and hadoop so one output is coming from the local for testing and one output is coming hadoop okay the similar way we will do in the spark right we will test our application in our intellij and the same application we will run in the spark the only thing is the spark will be using the spark submit command so in the spark we use this command spark hyphen submit for submitting the job spark hyphen submit so this command we will use there okay and hadoop is having the hadoop jar command okay hadoop jar command okay if you if you just do hadoop so you will see that what are the options are there in hadoop so one of the option you will see hadoop host names you can get hadoop workers you can get hadoop jar is there see this is a jar hadoop jar okay or you can replace with the name yarn jar because the newer version is the using the yarn jar so whatever you can use right okay okay so this is this is clear hadoop program okay now next uh, uh, we have completed because there are other programs also there but i will take it those program in the weekdays class okay next we come to the hive okay 
we will cover the some other new topic okay so that is a sql one tool hive is a sql tool okay so so far this clear because this is not important but uh, for understanding concept if you if somebody is asking to you can you explain the map reduce functionality architecture or how map reduce works and uh, what are the what is the way like you can run the program in the map reduce so testing like you can do in the locally in the intellij editor or you can do uh, run the program in the hadoop right cluster right using the hadoop jar command so you can tell about this command and then you can um, and, and if somebody is asking the code, so you can even write uh, this small functions you can write, like just driver, three, four lines of code you can write, and map and reduce function also you can write this, this logic, okay? So I, I, will, I will show you more simplest way we can write this logic, but logic will be the same. This logic will not change, but this is using tokenizer, I will use a different way also. So different way is like I will use I will I will take it each line and I will split and then I will create a for loop and then I will iterate the array. Okay, so that is other easy way you can do. Okay, um, rather than tokenizer because tokenizer also running a while loop, but instead of that I can run the for loop and I can take each line of text and then I can do. Okay, simply suppose you have this line. Okay, this is the input you have. So first you have to convert this line into a string. Okay, you say a string line and you take input dot to string. Okay, after that line is already there. That is the reason, error, line one. Okay, and then you will create a string array, with array equal to line one dot split and then you say space okay this space is there you space and then now for loop then you can say string str colon array you are iterating each word and now you can use the same context dot write this line so now this is the str this str is a simple string and you have to change into the text type just pass this and this code will work that's it. So this this line of code you have to provide that's it you are getting the input text and then you convert it into the 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 java type string type and then you apply the split function same python suppose i say python you have to do the word count you have to do python so what you do Simply you will be doing the split and get the list and then you trade the list and then you will do the create a dictionary. But here I'm not writing a complete count word count because this is divided. The entire same program is divided into the two part. One is map and reduce. So map part is splitting the data and reduced part is aggregating data. But when you're writing Python map reduce, uh, Python word count program, you can write a one single code where you define dictionary and you check if the i if the any key is not there in the dictionary you will add with the one count if it is already there you will take it out and then plus one and then again put it right so that code you write so suppose i have not so th this code i am not using suppose okay and now i want to test with this logic This, all these things we don't need to do. Okay, so this is this is simple map function logic. Can you see this is a map function? Okay, now I want to test this application locally. <laughs> and it is auto save, okay? You don't need to save it. Okay, this is the jar I'm creating again, okay? So jar is there. So if I do ls here, ll here, so can you see my updated jar is, this is not updated jar, this is a 1046 because 12 minutes before I copied the jar. So again, I have to copy the jar. So this is the latest jar. I copy this, I copy this. Or even I can open the terminal on this uh, target folder and then I can do, I don't need to copy paste, okay. Okay, so here I'm deleting this jar and uh, pasting again jar, okay, I paste it. Now, 
I do LL here. Can you see this is updated? 1058. This is the latest job. This is the latest job. Okay. Now I run the same job, same command. Okay. And I don't need to, do I need to create this out directory again? Is it needed? Out one. I, I need to delete or not? You don't need to. No, because my program is handling that. If my yes. program is not handling, I have to delete this directory. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm just running again. And then whatever logic I change, now my code will run with that logic. The simplest logic, right? Like how to split with the space, with the split function, and then we can do the for loop and then each word we are giving one count. So Java is providing tokenizer to splitting the word. So same thing. Now I want to check the output file. So output file location, everything will same. Nothing changed on that. Output file also at the same location. So here, this is the part R. Because same name file will create. This is the same out. Okay, this is the same output is done. Okay, so this is the word count program. Okay, there are many other program. I will show that because partitioner, combiner. Okay, that will take time. Okay, so let's come to the some new topic. Okay, so now we come to new topic high. Okay, so we have covered so far two component. One is SDFS, second one is a MapReduce. Okay, so Hadoop is having the total six component. Those are the major component, other components also there, but we need to use other one is a high, school, HBase and flu. Okay, other one is a pig is there, but nowadays nobody using pig. Okay, OG is there. OG is uh, nowadays replaced by the Airflow. Okay, so there are many more components there, but we have to do this all. Okay, so Hive is the next one. So Hive is a tool, SQL Data Warehouse tool. Okay, so you can say like I need a, some tool which can handle my SQL queries, like which can like so far we can write entire program in Python. Ah, uh, yeah, Java program you can write in Python as well. Right, uh, same Python. Uh, version is also there right so if you want to see the word count uh, map reduce word count map reduce word count in python but that will not be a cluster type okay because python is a single threaded not multi-threaded like python especially this map java program uh, python program so this is a python version of your this is a python version so this is a python version logic mapper.py is there okay so Python is multi-threaded, but you will not get the advantage in the map reduce, okay, in the Python code. Because when you are running in the cluster, so it will be running not parallelly, okay. Here is, uh, you can test locally. If you want to test locally this Python program, you can test with the one mapper pi, one reducer pi, and then you can run the logic like this. So this, if I, if I have a Python in my machine, I can test this logic locally in my computer, right? So I will write a one mapper.py, one reducer.py, and I will give this command, Hadoop streaming mapper, mapper.py and reducer.py. Or if I want to run, this is the Hadoop cluster one command. Okay, this is the Hadoop cluster command to the run. Okay, but the another command is like, you can give the output of this one, give input to this program, okay? So how to run locally, run local machine. Code will be the same. There is no difference in the code. Only thing is how to execute the program. Like this, you have to give. Cat, your text file is there. And then you are running the Python mapper.py. And whatever input output is coming, then you will run the reducer.py so next command will be like this you will run cat your file name whatever input file is there pi python mapper.py sort command you will use to sorting the so manually you are doing everything on the command line tool right on the your python local python editor or local python installation right so you are giving mapper.py sorting you are doing okay sorting you are doing and then you are applying the python reducer class okay so this is the this is a command for the like local computer 
and whatever was coming that was the hadoop one this one is a hadoop you can run because there is a hadoop command is there this one where it is gone this one hadoop streaming so this way you can run okay if i run this see if i show you this like hadoop streaming hadoop streaming mapper okay only only we check this one hadoop streaming we check hadoop streaming means uh, like streaming in the in the hadoop like spark is having the streaming hadoop is also having streaming okay see hadoop streaming when i do okay streaming command maybe the different name is there hadoop we can run python okay local and same uh, like in the cluster okay we can run okay so i was talking about uh, uh, hive okay hive is a sql data warehouse tool and hive is originally uh, generated by the facebook okay facebook is a creator of the hive and later on later on it is given to it is given to the apache okay now it's a apache hive okay it's a part of uh, apache foundation it's a part of apache foundation part of apache software foundation okay and part of ecosystem part of hadoop ecosystem okay 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 we we start in the uh, 10 minute okay uh, yeah i think uh, 10 minute is okay okay let's start in the 10 minute
Hi everyone, are you getting my voice? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. So I was starting here with the introduction of the hive. Okay. <clears throat> so hive is uh, most uh, like a demanding tool in the Hadoop, right? Because after, uh, like I say, uh, Spark, right? So as a data warehousing tool, we have the some data warehousing tool in the cloud. Okay, so in the Redshift is there in the AWS cloud. So AWS cloud, we have Redshift and uh, Azure, we have SQL Data Warehouse tool, SQL Data Warehouse tool, uh, SQL Server, right? SQL Server is there. And uh, GCP, we have BigQuery. Okay, but on premises, if I talk about on premises, so Hive is uh, part of Hadoop ecosystem component. So Hive is SQL Data Warehouse tool. So Hive is completely giving the, the SQL features, right? So whatever you run in the SQL queries, you can run SQL here. And more than the SQL, it is giving the other features in the Hive. So I will talk about those features like, like partitioning and bucketing and uh, surdays. C license, DC license, so different file format data. So different file format data, we can create a table. Okay, we can create a table from the different file format data, like JSON file, XML file, okay, Parquet, ORC, Avro. So different, different file format data, we can create a table and regex, regular expression, right? So, so these are the different types of surveys are there, C license, DC license. Apart from that, in the highways, UDF is there. So we can write our custom UDF function. So we know the built-in functions are there, date function, string functions. So those are common uh, functions are there, but we will use here our custom UDF, right? I will write user-defined function, UDAF, user-defined aggregate function, like min, max, average, and user-defined table function. So three types of UDF is there, UDF, UDF, and UDTF. So UDTF is uh, uh, like a converting rows to column and column to rows. So that is UDF, like export function is there. That is the UDF fun UDTF function. So export function is a UDTF function, UDTF, okay? Table function. And apart from that in the Hive is, uh, we can integrate Hive with any other uh, tools like Hive with the scope integration is there. Hive with the HBase integration is there. Okay, Hive with HBase, Hive with Spark. Okay, Hive with Spark integration. Okay, so these are the integrations are there. Okay, so these are the different different integrations are also there. So first thing is we have to learn the basic and Hive is having the complex data type also there. So general DBs, if you if you talk about the SQL database DB, so what is the difference between the SQL databases DB versus Hive. So if I say the normal SQL, the NC SQL, if I talk about the NC SQL, that is same. The NC SQL is same in across database, across databases and Hive. Okay. But when I say Hive is supporting the complex data type. So I can create an array data type in the Hive. And uh, we have a struct data type is in Hive. Struct. Okay, struct is a mixed data type. So array is the like same data type values. Like suppose I say marks. When I say marks, so marks is a student marks is an integer type array. So array of integer, array of integer values. Okay, integer values. Okay, but I say I want to define the address. So address is not only integers. There is a, a string is there. The street is street is a string type. Okay, zip code is integer, right? And I say house number. House number is integer, okay? So, or alphanumeric, okay? Integer or alphanumeric, okay? So integer or alphanumeric. So, it is a mixed data type is there. So, that is called struct. It is called struct. 
which has different data types different data types okay third one is third one is a map type so hive support the map type so stuck type stuck stuck type is a mixed data type mixed data type and the third one is a map type that is a key value pair type so map is key value pair map is key value pair and key value and key value we define the one key and associated with the value okay so these are the called complex data type so hive support hive supports complex data type complex data type so two data types are there primitive data type okay primitive data type is the number string date these are the primitive data type complex data type okay so hive support both simple data type and complex data type but in the sql databases like we have only simple data type simple data type okay those are the like uh, int is there string uh, where care is there where care care is there right and uh, uh, double float right so those kind of values uh, data types are there okay and uh, if i see what other difference in the hive and the sql data uh, uh, databases so hive is schema on read schema on read and uh, sql databases are uh, schema on write what it is meaning so hive is checking schema at the type of write at the time of writing the data so oh, not hive so, sorry sql database is checking schema validation schema validation at the time of writing data into table okay into table in the sql db table okay so it will not allow so it is a very strict about the schema right if your data type is not matching and what data type values you are inserting both should match so you will see otherwise your insert query will fail insert query insert query will fail okay will fail but in case of hive it is not like that in hive it is checking schema validation schema validation is checking at the time of at the time of reading data from the table reading data from table like it will give the null value if the type is not matching it will not give the error it will give null value it will give null value if type is not matching okay and other thing is that is a reason that is a reason um high has no checking no checking of uh, schema validation schema at the time of writing data writing writing data writing data into hive table so you will say like millions of rows you can write in the hive quickly because if i am saying the sql databases it takes time to write but here in the hive it will not take much time so fractions of second you will write 50000 records 10 1 lakh 1 lakh records okay so it will not take much time because it is not validating anything it is just dumping the data so it is not taking much time to write data into hive table okay it is simply dumping data into table without validation so generally in the hive now we first write the data then we have another layer that is called validation layer like hive is having the different one is the landing zone landing layer just write the data just write data into hive table no validation data into hive table okay so we have a question right like okay if we write it data so what is the point of writing data because we want to write data quickly first we are not waiting for the writing because the data is coming like daily basis and it's a huge data right but our second process keep going on that is the validation layer like a, like like a, you are creating some staging table so staging tables from this landing layers right the tables we are creating a staging tables and then we are doing the validation 
So then we are doing the data type validation. So that is called data type casting validation we are doing from landing layer to check whether data type is valid or not. Okay. So first initially we are writing data in the bulk. Okay. Initially we are writing the data into the bulk. Okay. I'll just make it font size. Okay. Okay, this is clear so far, right? So Hive architecture. Now we come to the next thing is schema on read, schema on write. Now Hive architecture. So Hive architecture, Hive has various uh, like in inbuilt tools and components are there in Hive itself in Hive. So Hive is having the Hive CLI. So Hive CLI is the command line interface, command line interface where we write a SQL queries. Write and uh, write the SQL query. Write SQL queries and get the result get the result immediately okay immediately another way another thing is there in the hive is having uh, when this you are giving a query right you are giving a query as an input we have hive is having the compiler hive is having the compiler parser okay and then database execution engine right so one execution engine is there in the hive same like a database is like hive itself is a Similar to database, right? We are talking about the compiler, parser, execution engine, right? And Hive is having the different phases are there. So Hive query once comes, so it is converted into the logical plan. Okay, then physical plan, and then map reduce plan. Physical plan, and then map reduce plan. Okay, and this this part, logical and physical plan is basically these phases compiler, parser, and execution engine. And once this is converted into the MapReduce job, because I told you everything is Hadoop converted into the MapReduce, okay? We are not uh, making it MapReduce, but internally it is converting into MapReduce. Even if I write in the select star from group by any select star from table and then group by any query I'm writing, so here count star query, I'm writing like department group by count, okay, department and count star, each department wise, right? So this kind of query group by department. So this queries have mapper and reducer will be converted because we have some mapper phase and some reducer phase is there, right? Aggregation is happening, right? Group by is there, key aggregation, same word count program kind of, right? So if I say same key is repeating how many number of times, right? So we will be doing the group by aggregation side. So, but we are not doing internally this map reduce. It is done by the hive. Okay. So hive query is having the different phases, logical plan, physical plan, and map reduce plan. And this map reduce job is executed. And then we get the, the query result. And query result will come in the form of table, will be coming in form of table. Right. So table is a, we know, right, Hive is a database, right? So again, the same terminologies will be there. Hive is having database, databases, and databases have the tables, and tables having the fields are column, fields are column, and rows are the record, rows are record. So that is the first terminology in the Hive, okay? So we will create a database, simply create database command, create database, my database, my DB. Then I will use the database, use my DB. Same like I do in the MySQL and Oracle, my DB. And then I will be doing the create table command, create table. Okay. So here little bit structure is different in the create table. So when we creating a table, so we define the fields and column, but after that we define the row format delimited and field terminated by field terminated by comma because we are reading the data from the file we are not inserting one one record in the hive hive is for bulk load hive we are not writing a one one single single record we can write it but if one record is taking same time if you are writing 50000 record okay 
So better is we can write a huge amount of data from the file. So we will be providing the mapping, like where is my file is there and what is the, uh, what is the, like format of the file, like it is a comma delimited. Default is a comma, but I told you we can use survey, right? Survey is other different types of file format we can need, like XML and uh, JSON or uh, regex, any type of we can do, but this is the default file format. Okay, so I show first uh, how to use Hive. Okay, first I check is Hive is installed on my machine or not. I will. So I will I will share a one uh, book code. I will tell because that one is a uh, uh, Hive essential. Hive essential. Okay, Apache Hive essential. I have the source code and the, the book also. This is a Apache Hive Essential, second edition. So this book has everything. So this book has uh, all the like source code, everything is there like uh, data definition language, like creating table, database, partition, bucketing, okay. And um, uh, there's a data manipulation, right? Uh, load, insert, export, import, functions, UDF, aggregation. So I'll complete SQL part will cover also, right? Windowing function. And the source code of this book is source code. Source code of high packet pub. Pack pub. So this is the source code location. Okay, this is free source code. So script folder having all the chapter wise script. So chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is all the chapter. So three is starting. First two chapters are theoretical one, so there is no SQL, but chapter three, they have given the complete the SQL. So if you once thus run this SQL one by one, right, so creating a table. So you seen, right, I told the row format delimited, field terminated by, but this is a complex data type because we are using here array and map, right? So this is a little bit different for the complex data type, but normal simple table you are going to create, then you can create a simple table just row format delimited and field terminated by comma. Okay, when you are doing so joins all all are there here. Join union, all these different different types of joins are there. So you will completely revise your SQL here, and uh, you will be practicing SQL here, but not too much because mostly this is high ways. Uh, we are using the partition bucketing. Those are the specifically high related uh, features. Suppose your data is a pipe delimited one. So you will give row format delimited and pipe delimited data. So this data you are providing as a file, as an input, and where the data is pipe delimited, and then you can create a table. Okay, let's see that how to start high. Okay. So if if I'm just writing the high, so my high will be started. Okay. So I have already installed high. Okay. Simply if you want to install Hive, so there is uh, this website link. Okay, yesterday I showed one uh, Hadoop one, Hive installation on Ubuntu. Okay. So when you come to here, so it is the installation stacks for the Hive. So you need a Java and Hadoop before because without uh, running Hadoop, you can't uh, use the Hive because Hive is completely depend on the Hadoop file system. So first you need a Java and Java and plus you need a Hadoop. Okay, before going, and then we will download the Hive zip, and then after we will extract the zip, and then we set the Hive home path and bin path, and after that, uh, just we have to create a, some temporary directory in the Hadoop file system. So Hadoop file system is running. Okay, some warehouse directory we have to create because Hive is using two types of table internal table and external table, okay? So that concept is there and which are the internal, which are the external table, I will talk about that. And uh, once we do this all steps, so we will get the high vis keep running. And here, if I see show databases, so if you have not created databases before, so you will see only default database, okay? If it, you are doing the first time, or if you, if you want to create a new database, then you will use create database, database command. So you will be creating a new database. Okay, so you will be creating a new database. 
So first we create a database and then we use the database and then we create a table, then we define internal table or external table. So we have to use a keyword external for creating a external table, okay. Yeah, I do this one. Okay, hype terminal came, but that is giving some error runtime. Okay, this is just so we have to you know. Okay, so first thing is like uh, when we are going to create an internal table and external table, okay. Okay, so like this way, create database testing and show databases. Or we can install the Hive on the Ubuntu. Just show. So I will start my instance. This is my yesterday one. Yeah, this is my yesterday one. I have to start the instance. Okay, so I will follow the this uh, one uh, I installation moment. So Hadoop and uh, those things already running. So <clears throat> I will be connecting. I'm using this. So first I start the Hadoop here because if I do JPS, my Hadoop will not be running, right? So I will start the Hadoop service, start all.sh. So when you are going to install Hive, before that you have to start the Hadoop service, okay. So first thing is uh, we have to download the Hive from the official website. So the latest release is four, but we are going to use 3.1.31, uh, uh, older release, download a release now, this one. So here is the 3.1.3 this release, so click on this, and here is a bin tar file. So this is the bin tar file, copy link address. So now my all services are running, Hadoop services are running. So here I installed the Hadoop, right? Hadoop 3. Point. So same folder, here itself I will do the hive, okay? So I will use wget command, and then I will paste it. This is so it will be it will be downloading. Then I will extract it and same uh, I will set the bash RC the hive home path. Yesterday I set it for the Hadoop uh, Hadoop home, so I will set it uh, hive home because when I set it hive home, I can run hive anywhere, any any command, any any folder, any place I can run. I don't need to go to the bin directory. Okay, I can run from anywhere. So okay, so if I see here, 
my type target. Okay, so I have to extract it. Here is the command XBF command. So we have to use this command, but I have to change the version. Okay, so I have to change the version. So my version is 3.1.3 .3 and Binta. So it will create a one folder. So I will remove the tar one bin dot tar. Now I will rename it because it's a big name. So I will rename MB Apache Hive 3.1.1 folder to Apache Hive 3.3. .3, I will do this. Okay. So now I will see my folder name is this. Now I open the batch RC. So I'm in right now in the home folder. So I can open nano bshrc, okay, and so here I will go to last of line, and where is my Hadoop home? This this line. So I I will take it from here because it is already given. I have to just change the version. So export hive home. So I will. Right click and paste. Okay, so here is some correction is there. One thing is this uh, double code, you can keep it, but keep it before home slash. Okay, this is a mistake. Okay, so slash home slash. This is not Hadoop, this is our Ubuntu. So this is our username Ubuntu Ubuntu and Apache Hive 3.1.3, .3, not with them. So 3.1.3. .3, this is my directory, and the, this path is fine. Okay, path is like high home slash bin. Control X, Shift Y, enter, and then we do source command. This is very important, otherwise, your changes will not reflect. So our this part is done. Okay, till here we are done. Okay, and now this is also done. Now we have to set our Hadoop path in Hive Home config file. So if I do this, nano this, so I can directly copy paste this command because I have already set my Hive Home path. Okay, and then I can add this one. Okay, so I copy paste this. Okay, this file is open. So anywhere I can add this export command of the Hadoop path. So I, I have to check what is my Hadoop is there. Okay, my Hadoop is not 3.2.1. My Hadoop is, what is my Hadoop is installed yesterday. Ubuntu, we open another one, we check. What is my Hadoop home? Okay, we check here. What is my Hadoop is there? 3.3.6. 3.3.6. So home Ubuntu Hadoop 3.3.6. 3.3.6. Okay, so this is a Hadoop home. Control X, Shift Y, Enter. But here is no source. Okay, this is not a bash RC. This is a shell script. The shell script, uh, this is a high config shell. So in this one, we don't need to do bash RC, okay? Config file only we have to do. So this one done. Now we have to create some temporary directory. It is required for the high on the Hadoop file system, okay? So just we have to create this directory space. So it will run SDFS, DFS, NKDI, a yeah? temp command, okay? So generally temp we are not creating before. So we are uh, using temp directory internally by this hive. So we are creating. So this is a permission we are giving ch mode permission, group write permission. On the group we are giving write permission. So this command we run. So all four command we run it. Okay, one two command for the warehouse directory. So this is an internal directory for the hive table. Okay, for internal table. So warehouse directory is a 
directory where the internal table is stored. Okay, but this directory in Hadoop file system only. Okay, so this directory we have to create. Okay, and uh, then permission we have to give. We have to give the permission. And uh, once it's done, this is just uh, LS they are doing, so we don't need to do this. Next thing is we have to we we have to change the name of the they give the hive default .xml. If I go to the con folder, so I will see cd apache hive. Okay, here ls cd con. So if I show you here, so hive template something file is there xml, not a hive site .xml. So the naming convention in the hive is like in any Hadoop component, right? So you seen in the uh, SDFS, right? SDFS site.xml is there. So hive site.xml. So we have to rename it to hive site.xml. So just simply copy this command. CP means you are copying another file name as a hive site.xml. So complete template you are converting into the hive site.xml. Okay. So if you do LL here, so you will see both are there. Hive site is there, hive template default, but that is not for our use. Our use is this one, which is we have copied another new file. Okay. So this is done. After that, once this is done, and uh, then we have to run this. Uh, hive is using one internal database, right, for the maintain metadata. So same like uh, Hadoop is uh, having a metadata in the name node and Hive is using a one metadata stored database that is a Derby. So Derby is a default database is given by the Hive. But suppose you say, okay, I don't want to use Derby. I want to use my own any SQL database as a meta store database. So meta store database is a part of the Hadoop architecture that is basically using your uh, database where that is using that information about the table. Actual data is stored in the Hadoop file system, but the table information, whether it's a managed table, external table, what are the table columns and table type, column types, right? So all those information is stored in the meta store database. So I'm creating that Derby database. I'm initializing that Derby database by using the schema tool command. So I have to just run this command. So I can run anywhere because I'm using the high home path, right? So high home path we are using, so it will initializing. Uh, okay, so this one is saying line number three two one five ninety six. This position, right? So there is a one character is the issue. Okay, so okay, so I want to find that illegal character. Up suppose this is in the your local environment. This there okay, you are installing. So you can directly open in the editor and then you can go to the line number. Then you can change it. But suppose you want to change uh, this uh, the particular line number you want to go. So you have to open some editor, right? Okay, BI editor. And I am going to open hivesite.xml. Okay. Now I want to go to, uh, I want to find that character, right? 3215. Okay, line numbers are not there. So we cannot find through line number. So what is the way to find that? line because okay or either we can set the line number go to the line number we say So it is saying colon line number you can write command line mode and the line number and G normal mode.
word search. Actually, word we don't know, right? That what is the issue is there that we don't know. So word we cannot find. Uh, mm. Actually, this is the Ubuntu, right? Uh, in this, go to that file path in that location, in the local, and then open it in editor. It's not easy, right? But this is the. Uh... Ah, I understand. Yes, actually. This okay, is so this is uh, yes. like I'm. I'm looking for the command here, right? Suppose slash. Okay, so this is search. If I know the word, I can search it. Okay, like I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that one is uh, basically, okay, I can find that. What is that? Okay. In my... Okay. So this is software. Okay. So here is hi. And con, this is the hive site dot so Now I say where is the three two one five line number. So I know three two one five is this three two one five. Okay, here is uh, some. Okay, I deleted some lines actually. Some error comes, so I deleted. So, okay, so I think this is not original one. If the original one is there, so we can come to know. So here is, uh, I have original high downloaded. I think I deleted. Yeah, high is here. This is the original. Okay. This is the original, right? So here, con high. So here is a hive site.xml is not changed. Okay, so I will open the same file, hive default XML template. This is the original. So here I go to the 3215 line number. 3215. This is the 3215. So this is the character. This is the problem. Okay, so now I want to check. Uh, okay, suppose I want to search this transition. Yeah, right. This is a different. Okay. I think there is a next is a, this is not coming same transition because transition may be. Okay, so now this is the character. So these two characters, the special characters we need to delete. Okay. Okay, so this one we deleted. Now we save this file. Escape colon wq. Okay. So we saved it this file. Now we run this one. Yeah, so it is initializing my, this is completed, okay? Now, after this, I have to start the hive. So if I see here, the next step is after this. So this one is we don't need to do because if some error is coming for the no such method error for the this Google error, right, Gava error, then we have to do this step. The next one is a hive. So we just type hive. So now this is the final error and this error is basically some lines we have to delete in the wherever this 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 thing is there. So actually multiple places, right? This uh, Java IO temp DIR is there. 
So in the same hive site dot XML, we have to find and delete those properties. Okay. So these properties we have to delete. Okay, so this is the one. So this is the, this is which property it is coming? This property it is coming. Even the description one, we don't need to delete, but uh, we are for like this is, so we can use BD. Comment will work, right? Comment, Comment will work, but uh, actually this is not needed, right? Okay. okay. So even I can do comment, that is not a problem. Comment or delete, like this is not used, right? Okay, this is a one time. Okay, again, we have to find the same thing because it's a four places. Okay, so this is the another one. Okay, so this, so this, so, but, but we have to delete carefully because we have to add only starting and ending property tag. Okay, so DD. D D D D D D and D D. Okay, so this is then again find one more total four time is there. Okay, this so this is D D D D and again this okay. This one. This is a final. Okay. This one is property Java I attend here. Okay. Now, colon WQ. Now I start Hive again. So I should get the Hive terminal. Hive greater than sign. Okay. So now if I do show databases, now Hive is successfully installed so far. So Hive is giving a default database. Okay, that is a default. So create database. I say my DB. Show databases. My DB is coming. Use my DB. And now show tables. I don't have any table. Okay. Now I want to create my table. Okay, so I can create a table. So I can create a table, internal table, action table. So from where our practical will start. So once we do this uh, show create table and then we will. Now, if I want to create a table, suppose I'm going to create a table. This is an internal table because I'm not giving any external keyword. So when I give the external keyword, then it will create an external table. So the difference in the internal and external table is see, when you drop internal table, your data and schema both will be deleted. But in case of external table only, only schema will be deleted and data will not be deleted. And external table, you can create even the warehouse directory or outside warehouse. So outside warehouse directory, you have to give the location. Location is important when you are creating external table. But if you are going to create an external table in the warehouse directory, you don't need to give location. So here location is another keyword will come location. So we are going to create first internal table. So simply I'm just copying this command. And I run here in the hive shell. The table is created. Now I do show table. This is same like anyone is uh, aware of uh, a SQL query. So this is the test one, two, three, four is give. Okay, I want to see the schema of this table, DESC, test one, two, three, four. Okay, I want to find the create table command of this one. So there is a special command, show create table command. Show create table and table name. When you give this command, you will get the complete create table syntax. You will get a create table syntax of this. You can see here you are getting only just 
ID and name like data types you are getting on this in the DSC. But when you are doing the show create table, you will see the where the file location. So can you see here the default location of the database uh, of this uh, table location is a warehouse user high warehouse and your database name is there my db dot db. So my db is a database name and dot db is appending automatically because every database having dot db and this is a table is a folder and whatever data will be created whenever you are writing data in this table. So you are you are able to see the data in the form of table, but internally the table, this table has the data as a file. Okay. So suppose I want to write a data as a file in this folder. If I keep it the folder, automatically the data will be there in the table. I can do the select star from table. I will get the data. So I don't need to do insert into command. Okay. Load data command. We don't need to do. So there are two ways to write the data into the table. One is load command is there and another one is command is there to copy the file in this location is will populate the data. So how many columns are there? And if you want to run any Hadoop command, you can run on the hive shell also. Suppose I want to run Hadoop fs minus ls slash. Okay. So you will see you can run on the hive terminal, but you have to use exclamation. Any Hadoop command, you can use exclamation. You don't need to go another terminal. Hadoop terminal, you don't need to go. Okay. So you don't need to go to the terminal and run the Hadoop command. You can run itself here. So it will not be considering this command is a hype command because you are using exclamation. Okay. So it is showing you the Hadoop directory, root directories. Okay. So you can run the command there. So next is like, uh, I want to, I have created table. I want to see the data in this table, but there is no data. So if I do select star from select star from test one, two, three, four, it will be showing no data because there is nothing loaded. So now how many ways we can load the data? Okay. I, I create a some file. Okay. What are the columns are there? ID and name. So two columns are there and, and uh, what is uh, field delimited character comma. Okay, so if I create a file here, okay, some MKDIR, I create some file test, some directory I'm creating. And now inside this directory, I create a some file, nano uh, internal, internal.txt, ID and name. So I give one, some name, test to x, y, g, p, q, r. So suppose this data I want to load, control x, shift y. So now this file is here. Okay. This is the file. And what is the path of this file? This is a path. So I want to load the data in my internal table from this directory, okay? So what I'm going to show you, I will use load data local in path in path is when you are loading the data from the local file system. And when you are lo loading the data from the Hadoop file system, local keyword you will not use. You will use load data in path. So Hadoop to Hadoop you load the data or local file system to Hadoop you load the data into table. Okay. So I mean, right now I'm showing to you load data local in path and I'm giving a location, right? Slash home slash Ubuntu, my username. And I created a directory high test slash internal dot txt. This is my file location into table keyword will come. And what is my table name? Test one, two, three, four. Okay. Data is loaded. It is too quick to load data. This is just only three record. Even if 50,000 record, it will take fractions of second to load the data because it is not validating schema. Now, if I do select count star, now I do. So now you will see the data came, right? And if I want to see in my Hadoop command to check in my location, what is there? If I go to my user um, folder, so user folder has user, user high warehouse directory. Okay, so what is the full location? User high warehouse my db.db 
my db dot db and my table name is a test one two three four. This is my location of the internal table, right? So now I see one file will be copied here. Okay, I think I've done some mistake. Where house? Okay. This is from where house. You will see here one file is copied. The same thing. If I do the same thing manually. Rather than using the load data local in path, if I directly put the command, because this is the Hadoop location, right? So I can do that also, right? Manually, I can do that. So I don't need to use them. Load data local command, local in path command, I don't need to use, okay? So my data is there, okay? And uh, this file, if I want to see the content, it will be the same file, okay? So I do Hadoop fs minus cat command. And I give this complete location. Copy, paste. So you will see same data is there in the file. Whatever file was there in my local file system, same data is there. So now if I drop this table, if I say drop table, and I say test one, two, three, four. I told you one thing, when I'm dropping the table, it will delete the schema and data both. So first we verify the data in the file. Is it this file is there or not? First, let's see. What is saying? File is not there. Okay. Is it table is there? If if we if we see this folder is there, because if file is not there, so table will not be there also. Like a table folder. Okay. LS. Okay, if I see this test one, two, three, four, also not there because file with folder, everything is deleted, but database will not be deleted. If I see here database, because database we have not dropped, we have dropped only the table. So database is there. So database is there. It is not saying not found, right? It is there. Now, if I do select a star from test one, two, three, schema, right? So if I want to see, so it is saying table not found. It means schema is deleted as well as data is deleted. Both are deleted. Okay. So it is not secure, but, but this warehouse directory, everybody has not direct access. Okay. So generally we say internal table is not secure, but it is created inside the warehouse directory. So that is the reason it is secure because nobody has the access directly this hive shell, hive terminal, and nobody has access directly on the warehouse directory. So this is the one way we have done. Suppose I say, I do Hadoop put command, Hadoop fs minus put. Where is my file is there? In my local file system location. So slash home slash Ubuntu hive test is my location, hive test slash internal dot txt. If this file I put in the same location of the warehouse directory. But before that, I have to create a table because table is dropped, right? Because table is dropped. So I have to create a table again. So I have to run the same command to run the create a table because table is dropped. So I, I create a table first. Table is created. Now I will be put command I will use Hadoop fs minus put then home slash ubuntu hive test slash my file name is internal.txt so this is simple how to command i'm running this is not related to hive just i'm placing the file in the exactly the hive location how to so table location okay so slash user slash hive slash warehouse warehouse slash my db dot db slash again that folder is created right because i created table test one two three four this is a location in this location i am placing the file okay my file is placed now i will verify Hadoop fs minus ls slash user slash so this this one i have to check So if I check this, so now file is placed. It's just put command I did, okay? 
Now, if I do select star from table, test one, two, three, four. So my same thing can, right? So data is populated, right? I didn't do that load data local path command. Okay, so when I'm not doing load data local in path command, so instead of this, I can copy the file and this data is populated. So this is called bulk load, okay? So I have populated. So we can create a external table also. This is the internal table, but external table, the advantage is like you don't need to, when you drop the table, your schema will be dropped, but not the data. So data is time taking thing. A schema is like a, you have a create table syntax, right? Any number of time you can run the, create table syntax, right? Okay, suppose this is a table and here I'm giving a location. It means this is an external location. Some Hadoop directory, it will create table one, two, three, four folder. This location, it will store this data. Okay, so this is external table and table name is a test one, two. So same, same type of data, same columns are there. Okay, I'm going to create an external table. Okay, this external table is great. I do show create table command and I say test one, two. So you will see here ID and name is a column and the external location is a directly the Hadoop location is there. Table data one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is outside warehouse. Now it is not inside the warehouse. So what is the process to load the data? That is the same process. Only thing is you have to, so same Hadoop put command. I will do Hadoop put command. I will change this location. So I will change the right side location. The left side location will be the same because the file is in the my local path. But what is the right side one? Now right side is table. This is the location. Table one, two, three, four. So I will copy this. I paste it here. So this table now Either you use load data local path command or you use this. This is common. This is not a difference for the internal or external. So either you use internal table or external table, either you can use the load data local in path command or you can use the put to put the file. Now, if I do select star from um, test one, two. So this is external table. Now it is also populated, okay? And the location of this table is Hadoop location, right? So Hadoop FS minus LS. And then this is the table. Table data one, two, three, four. So this location, your file will be there. Okay. Now we will see that if I drop the table, what will happen? I showed you the location and I showed you the schema. Okay. Now I'm going to drop this table, drop table, and I say test one, two. Okay. Now I drop the table. First, we see the table location folder. Okay. The table location folder is still your file will be there. It is not deleted, right? File will be there. The data is in place, but there is no schema associated with this data. The data is remain over there in the file system, Hadoop file system, but your any table is not associated with the data. This is detached. This data is detached, right? But again, if I create table command, I do, again, your data will be associated. Now, if I do the select star from table, I will see table not found. So table schema is deleted. Table schema is deleted, right? So test one, two external table is not there. Okay, but again, if I do, if I create this external table again, so my data is already present. Okay, I don't need to reload the data because data location is fixed, right? That is already present. So same location I'm giving again. Okay. So this location now is associated back to the table. And now I do select star from table. I will get the data. I will, I will see the table is populated. Okay. So this is kind of uh, internal and external table difference. Like when we are dropping a table in case of internal table, my schema and data both will be deleted. But in case of external table only, schema is deleted and we can recreate the table again from the same schema and same location. Okay. And next thing I will tell about the partition bucketing. Actually, we don't have much time. So I will cover the next further sessions in the weekdays. So we'll cover this hive, uh, the remaining topics and uh, this scoop patch ways. Okay. 
So I will I will give these files to you if you want to do practice. And uh, I have shared already my Google Classroom link for the previous sessions, previous. So you can follow this. It's up to you, right? Uh, you can see my videos, previous videos, and you can practice. So you don't need to wait for like uh, this coming topic. So you just got a start. And this start, you can follow yourself also, OK? So I will be going with my speed. So because I have to go with uh, my own pace, but I'm giving you the chance like you can practice and you can do. Yeah. Can you create a table using the existing schema? Um, create a table using existing schema. Existing schema means like uh, then table to table you are going to create. In that case, you are going to create table to table. So that is a create table command and as command you use. Like suppose I say create table test one, two, three as something like a create table as select start from one, two. It will run a map. So schema to schema is table to table. But what we are doing now, this is table we are creating and loading data from the files, okay? So next thing when we are doing, that is table to table, right? So that we will see in the partition, right? How to create a table to table, right? How to insert the data. So this is a new table is created. It is loaded the data also, test one, two, three. So I have not created table manually, right? I created table to table. So see the same table, same schema, everything is there, okay? Yeah, this one you are asking? Yeah, yeah, this is the one, right? Okay. Okay, I'll share the recording and the, this document so you can follow and you can do the installation. First, you set up the virtual box and I have already provided a, a VM link, right? I have already given in my uh, group description, right? There is a VM is there and that is a ready-made VM. You will get everything once you set up that VM and uh, you will get that uh, everything. Okay, but if you want to install your own, so you can do practice uh, on the AWS instance, you can do practice, okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, actually while downloading that uh, setup, it's uh, after downloading you know, after 10 gp its completion, File is failed is showing. There is no data in that driver like that error occurring. No, no, where, where? In the virtual box? Where? Yeah, in the virtual, yeah, in the virtual box. Which VM you are talking about? The data making VM or you are downloading your own VM? New? No, VM. data making, data making, data making. What are the drive you provided in the description, right? So drive is not downloading what you are saying. Like, first of all, did you download the 15 GB size drive or not? Yeah, 15 GB. 15 GP drive is there, right? Data making. Yeah, VM that is GP. downloadable or not? First you download that it or not? That is not downloaded. That I downloaded. But after some time, after completion of 11 GP, it is. Uh, no, that's a problem of your internet. Okay. That's a problem, right? See, no, internet is fine. See, if okay. I show you, okay. Let me. See, download is. Uh, Okay, see this screen, okay? I'm showing you same drive, okay? This is the drive, right? This is the drive, okay? Can you see here? Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, yes, and yes, now yes. I'm clicking on the download. It's a 14 GB, correct? Yes, right? yes. And now I'm click on the download. I'll see how much time it takes. See, I know it's it's working. So, so if After it is not downloading completely, that's a fault of your side, nah? right? How can you say like, okay, if it is downloading my side, okay, it is downloading or not? You are saying 11 GB, it is failing automatically. It's a, after 11 GB, uh, 12, G, uh, 12 GB, it's failing. Internet is internet is fine. That's what I'm trying to. I don't know someone is tried or not in in this group. But, okay, uh, okay. Let let ask. Uh, uh, ask in the group okay so you will come to know yeah. right it's a see if 
two person or one person is able to do this, right? So it's a fault is yours, right? Right, your side, correct? If I say, if I'm able to download this one, okay, completely successfully, right? So drive is not giving always problem, right? If some complete data is there, right? So even if it is a hundred GB data, it will be downloading. So it will all depend on your internet speed or like your bandwidth, right? All will be the point of uh, like your uh, download, right? Okay. Yeah, okay, let me check again. Put in the group, right? I, I, I will, I will message you once this will be complete. Download it, okay? I will message to you in the group, okay? I will message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you, thank you so much. Thank, thanks for the session. Yeah, bye.